Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your own Dr. Dean Dayal Swain, professor, author, and speaker. Let's discuss about managing competition. It's a very important session in strategic management. The basic objective of this session is to understand competition, analyze it, and manage it. In the sequence, we will use a very popular model known as Michael Porter's Five Forces model. As for Michael Porter, there are five forces that decides and shapes every industry's profitability. Five forces model can be applied to gain competitive advantage in the market. Five forces analysis is frequently used to determine corporate strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, in our previous videos, we talked about three level of strategy, corporate strategy, business strategy, operational or functional strategy. Now, Michael Porter's five forces theory is basically a great help in making corporate strategy. Professor Michael Porter talked about five forces in his book, Competitive Strategy in 1980. This model helps strategists to measure competition intensity in an industry, attractiveness of the industry, profitability of an industry or market. Let me repeat it for your convenience. This model helps strategists to measure competition intensity in an industry, attractiveness of an industry, profitability of an industry or market. Now, let me tell you what are those five forces that Professor Porter prescribed in his book, Competitive Strategy in 1980. First force, rivalry between existing farms. Second, threat of new entrants. Third, power of suppliers. Four, power of customers. Five, threat of substitutes. Now let me repeat once again for your convenience. What are those five forces? Rivalry in the existing industry. Threat of new entrants. Power of suppliers power of customers and threat of substitutes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go in detail about these Porter's five forces. The first one is rivalry between existing competition or existing firms in an industry. The larger the number of competitors along with the number of equivalent products and services they offer, the lesser the power of a company. Suppliers and buyers seek out a company's competition if they are able to offer a better deal or lower prices. Now the second one, potential threat of new entrants into an industry. A company's power is also affected by the force of new entrants into its market. The less time and money it costs for a competitor to enter a company's market and be an effective competitor, the more an established company's position could be significantly weakened. An industry with strong barriers to entry is idle for existing companies within that industry since the company would be able to charge higher prices and negotiate better terms. Now, the third force is power of suppliers. It is affected by the number of suppliers of key inputs of a good or service. How unique these inputs are and how much it would cost a company to switch to another supplier. The fewer suppliers to an industry, the more a company would depend on a supplier. As a result, the supplier has more power and can drive up input cost and push 
for other advantages in trade. Now the fourth one is power of customers. The ability that customers have to drive prices lower or their level of power is one of the five forces. It is affected by how many buyers or customers a company has, how significant each customer is, and how much it would cost a company to find new customers or markets for its inputs. Now, this is about power of customers. Now, very interestingly, the next one is power of substitutes, rather threat of substitutes. Substitute goods or services that can be used in place of a company's products or services pose a great threat. Companies that produce goods or services for which there are no close substitutes will have more power to increase prices and luck in favorable terms. When close substitutes are available, customers will have the option to cancel buying a company's product and a company's power can be weakened. Understanding Porter's five forces and how they apply to an industry can help a company to adjust and fine tune its business strategy to better use its resources or factors of organization to generate higher profits for its investors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we discussed about the basic objective of the session, and that is to understand competition. After understanding it, analyze it and manage it. And we will use Michael Porter's five forces model for this particular purpose. And as for Michael Porter, there are five forces that decides and shapes every industry's profitability. That's right. Five forces model can be applied to gain competitive advantage in the market. And you must be knowing what is competitive advantage. It's your advantage over your competitors. Now, Professor Michael Porter talked about five forces in his book, Competitive Strategy, way back in 1980. This particular model, which is on your screen right now, helps strategies to measure competition intensity, attractiveness, profitability of an industry or market. And what are these five forces? Rivalry between existing farms. If you're looking at your screen, it is mentioned competitive rivalry. If you go to the top, in orange color background, potential new entry or threat of new entrants. If you go to the right side, bargaining power of buyers. If you go to the left side, bargaining power of suppliers. If you come down, the threat of substitutes. Now what happens? Higher the competitive rivalry, lesser will be the profit and lesser will be the motivation for new entrants to enter into an industry. The best example in India is the telecom industry. I mean, the con competition is so intense. It's not cutthroat. It's sharp, cutting edge competition. The operating profits are very, very low. The capital investment is very, very high. So the industry is not very attractive to be in. Now, the second one is potential new entry threats. If there is no entry barrier and anybody can walk in to a business scenario, to an industry, it's very difficult and highly risky to operate in that particular sector or industry. Now, the third one is bargaining power of buyers. If buyers have got tremendous bargaining power, 
they will impact your bottom line because they will have tremendous bargaining power which in turn will reduce your prices you have to offer discount or freebies the next the fourth one is bargaining power of suppliers lesser the number of suppliers the more bargaining power they will be going to have because they will form cartel or pool higher the number of suppliers the lesser will be the bargaining power of the suppliers the buyers will have plenty of bargaining power now for example maruti buys tires from tire companies now suppose there are only two tire companies then what will happen tire companies will form a cartel and they will dominate the market and they will put maruti in problem but as there are hundreds tire manufacturing company the bargaining power lies with maruti because if somebody doesn't supply maruti can go pretty easily to somebody else so they have got more choices so the lesser the number of suppliers the more bargaining power they will have the higher the number of suppliers the more bargaining power the customers will have and the last one is threat of substitutes the higher the number of substitutes available in a particular industry whether it is product or services the uh, lesser will be the profit so you will not be as a company you will not be able to manage the prices because substitutes are plentifully available so if you increase the price of tea people will go for coffee if you increase both people will go for chocolates if you increase the all three they will go for ice creams if you increase all they will go for fruit juices and it goes on so higher the substitutes available in an industry that industry will be less profitable hence less attractive now ladies and gentlemen i hope these five forces must have given you an understanding why they are so important and need to be studied before you design your corporate strategy now let me repeat once again what are those five forces competitive rivalry potential new entry threats bargaining power of buyers bargaining power of suppliers threat of substitutes ladies and gentlemen please look into these five forces which normally decides the profitability of a company in a particular industry this model basically helps the strategists to measure competitive advantage the competition intensity the attractiveness of an industry profitability or profitability of an industry or market now this is all about five forces model now here it is very interesting to study a very interesting case but before that we will see what are the some of these strategies companies adopt to find the attractiveness of an industry we have got blue ocean strategy red ocean strategy purple ocean strategy green ocean strategy black ocean strategy but in today's video we will basically discuss about red ocean strategy and blue ocean strategy now if you look at your screen red ocean strategy basically focuses on current customers whereas blue ocean strategy focuses on focuses on new customers on non customers red ocean strategy basically talks about competition in existing markets while if a company is adopting blue ocean strategy they try to create on contested markets to serve if a company goes for red ocean strategy they always try to beat competition whereas in blue ocean strategy companies makes the competition relevant the best example is apple in red ocean strategy companies tries to exploit existing demand whereas in blue ocean strategy companies create and capture new demand in blue ocean strategy companies break the value cost trade off 
Whereas in red ocean strategy, companies make the value cost trade up. In red ocean strategy, companies align the whole system of a firm's activities with its strategic choice of differentiation or low cost. Whereas in blue ocean strategy, companies align the whole system of a firm's activities in pursuit of differentiation and low cost. So in blue ocean strategy, companies use both. But in red ocean strategy, it's a situation of either or. Now let me summarize what is blue ocean strategy and what is red ocean strategy. First, red ocean strategy. The best example is Pepsi and Co. You reduce one rupee, I reduce one rupee. You reduce two, I will go for two. Because we both are big and giant players, we will go for a frontal attack that is bloody war. But at the end of the day, customers will get benefit. But hard the companies, they will be going to bleed. So in red ocean strategy, basically the companies aims to fight and bid the competition. The red ocean strategy has the following features. They focus on competing in a marketplace which already exists. They focus on beating the competition. They focus on value and cost trade-off. Whereas in blue ocean strategy propounded by Professor Kim, it is the simultaneous pursuit of differentiation and low cost to open up new market space and create new demand. It is about creating and capturing uncontested market space, thereby making the competition irrelevant. Now let me sum up once again from the picture which is there on your screen. Red ocean strategy focuses on current customers. Blue ocean strategy focuses on non-customers. Red Ocean strategy basically adopted by companies who believes in competing in existing markets. Whereas in Blue Ocean strategy, companies normally create uncontested markets to serve. In Red Ocean strategy, companies always try to beat the competition. I'm better than you. Whereas in Blue Ocean strategy, companies make the competition irrelevant. The best example is Tesla. Or you can, you know, talk about Netflix, which we will discuss as a case in, in our video today. You can talk about Oyo as a blue ocean strategy. You can talk about Apple iTunes as a blue ocean strategy. Now, if you look into ANSAPS matrix, it talks about the same thing in a very interesting way. Now, if you look at the screen, you might have seen when the market is new and the product is old, the best strategy you can have market development. And that's what exactly Blue Ocean strategy talks about. You have to search new markets, new customers, unattended market, undivided, undifferentiated market, so that you will not be going to face a bloody war with your competitors. Because if you go for frontal attack very often, then your profits, the bottom line will get affected tremendously and you bleed and, 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 and your company might die in, in, in the competition. So it's very important to adopt blue ocean strategy for long term sustainability. Now let's go and talk about how Netflix taken Blockbuster, a very old and reputed company in the media services arena from the market. So before we go into the detailed discussion of this case, we'll also talk a little bit about Viacom and its acquisition of Blockbuster. Now, Netflix Incorporated is an American media services provider and production company headquartered in California. Founded in 1997 by Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph in Scott Valley, California. 
The company's primary business is its subscription-based streaming services, which offers online streaming of a library of films and television programs, including those produced in-house. As of April 2019, you can see on your screen how they have grown to 65 billion US dollar valuated company in 2017. And if you see in 2010, the blockbuster, which was the blockbuster company valued at 24 million only in 2010. Now, what happened during those years? As of April 2019, Netflix has over 148 million paid subscriptions worldwide, including 60 million in the United States and over 154 million subscriptions total, including free trials. Although Netflix has decided to end its free one month trial offer for maximum countries on February 2020. Now let's talk about Blockbuster. Blockbuster LLC, formerly known as Blockbuster Entertainment, was an American based provider of home movie and video game rental services through a video rental shop, DVD by mail, streaming, video on demand, and cinema theater. Blockbuster expanded internationally throughout the 1990s. At its peak in November 2004, Blockbuster employed more than 84,000 people worldwide, including about 58,000 plus in the United States only and about 26,000 in other countries and had 9,000 plus stores in total with more than 4,500 of these only in US itself. Competition from the Netflix mail order service, Redbox, automated kiosk, and video on demand services, as well as poor leadership were major factors leading to Blockbuster's eventual demise. As all of you know, Blockbuster began to lose significant revenue during 2000 and the company filed for bankruptcy protection in 2010. The following year, its remaining 1700 stores were brought by satellite television provider Dish Network. By early 2014, the last 300 company owned stores were closed. Now, when Netflix launched in 1997, Blockbuster was the undisputed champion of the video rental industry. But two years later, Viacom paid 8.4 billion to acquire Blockbuster. Now, what went wrong? In between, Hastings also offered 50 million US dollar for Netflix to, to Blockbuster, but they have underestimated the deal and it never happened. In 2004, Blockbuster did launch a Netflix-like online DVD rental platform, but it was too late. There were another problems with Blockbuster. They used to charge late fee. That was one of the, you know, like mistakes they have committed, which, which might be one of the reasons for their 1 billion losses in the year 2010. Now, if you compare both of them today, Netflix is valued around 65 billion US dollar, almost 1300 times increase from the valuation back in 2000. Now, what are the takeaways? What we have learned from the case? Number one, Netflix was very quick to provide the services. They have one advantage over Blockbuster. Blockbuster used to have myopic view about the industry, but Netflix is flexible and they're open. The second one, which we have learned from this case is companies need to adapt in this disruptive world. Netflix was quick to adapt. Blockbuster was very positive about their old formats. Third, it is always customer driven approach that always wins. So customer is the key in the business today. It was there, but now it's more important in a technology disrupted world. So if you're not customer centered, customer focused, then it's very difficult for you to survive in the market. Now, as you have seen in this particular case, Netflix was very quick to adopt the change and they're quick out of the block. They're very agile, lean company. 
they are very quick i mean that is proved when blockbuster did finally addressed the issue the cost of dropping late fees from their model amounted to, to a loss of 200 billion dollar meanwhile building out their online platform cost another 200 million so in essence they paid 400 million dollar in an effort to modernize and remain competitive with netflix which led to their 1 billion dollar uh, losses and it was also a leadership failure so we have learned from this particular case how blockbuster managed its competition it managed its competition from netflix very very badly and poorly because blockbuster was always company driven and company centric they don't bother about market and customers whereas netflix is always customer driven market driven customer centric market centric and netflix is one of the best case example of blue ocean strategy how they have successfully used blue ocean strategy whereby they simultaneously pursue the differentiation and low cost strategy to open up a new market space and create new demand it is about creating and capturing on contested market space thereby making the competition irrelevant whereas blockbuster was always intended to apply red ocean strategy here the aims to fight and bid the competition so they are very possessive about their traditional way of doing business and they were not able to smell the technology disruption that netflix was bringing into the uh, market red ocean strategy basically focuses on competing in a market space which already exist so they are obsessed about their existing market in red ocean strategy companies normally focus on beating the competition and they focus on value and cost trade off what exactly happened with blockbuster and they faltered and they did die the natural death now ladies and gentlemen i hope you have understood this video ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your patience listening to managing competition session of strategic management if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe right now